Uh, our next speaker is in charge, in fact, of a very interesting region uh, who will be able to uh, give us more of his experience. I would like to pronounce his name right. Mr. Jorge Borrego is the Deputy Secretary General of the Secretariat of the Union for the Mediterranean. Mr. Borrego, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Well, my task after those interventions will be rather difficult because they were both at political but also with a human dimension and a, a level of motivation that brings us that uh, responsibility on our options and recommendations to, to include the human dimension and, in fact, the externalities in the evaluation of projects. So, Thank you for those words, for us which are in the, who are in the field. It's very good to have it. And, well, take the, I'll take five or seven minutes of your time on behalf of my organization and the works we are having done. Uh, His Excellency uh, uh, Mezouar Saladin, His Excellency Ministers from Salvador and uh, Nicaragua, Madame Excellency uh, Neza Wafi and Mrs. Bernadita Muller, our co-host and dear colleague. Uh, we are beginning now a road with the Standing Committee of Finance in the uh, in Union for the Mediterranean, and I hope it will be a long one and a profitable one. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for the Union for the Mediterranean to co-organize this important gathering under the Moroccan presidency of COP22 and together with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. I would like to thank also to express my personal satisfaction to thank to the Kingdom of the Mediterranean for hosting this event, strengthening the success of the Moroccan presidency of COP22 the Union of the Mediterranean had the privilege to share other, uh, some events during that uh, road of the Moroccan presidency. And it was really not only a successful pro partnership in our point of view, but also uh, having the opportunity to share with this presidency that way to address people and namely, and I want to say it clearly, youth. It was a, a very important component in this, in this uh, presidency. Thank you also to the United, United Nations Framework uh, C for counting us, on us to organize this important event on such a crucial issue, which is mobilizing finance for climate resilient infrastructure. In fact, the Mediterranean region has been identified as one of the main climate change hotspots, hotspots in the world due to water scarcity, concentration of economic activities in coastal areas, and reliance on climate-sensitive agriculture. As an intergovernmental organization wholly dedicate, dedicated to the euro mediterranean region, the Union for the Mediterranean observes firsthand the adverse effects of climate change in the region, where carbon dioxide emissions have increased by a factor of four in the last half century, and the average temperature has is already almost achieving the 1.5 rise in compared to pre-industrial levels. That's the limit set by the Paris Agreement. Climate resilient infrastructure and its financing are fundamental aspects of adaptation to climate change. That is why the Union for the Mediterranean is co-organizing the, the 2017 Forum of the Standing Committee of Finance, mobilizing finance for climate resilient infrastructure, once again, I underline it, is a key issue in the region. All, and I will give you some numbers later to uh, strengthen that. All actions of the UF OFM contribute to the global agenda defined by the sustainable goals uh, and uh, regarding the climate action field and the objectives set, uh, set by the UNFCCC. In this sense, the UFM seeks to make the Mediterranean region part of the, global, of the global agenda and to make the global agenda part of the Mediterranean actions. 
the UFM is an intergovernment organization, as I said, uniting uh, 43 members of the Euro-Mediterranean region. We are deeply committed to work for the promotion and inclusive sustainable development that we consider paramount to overall goal of stability and growth. In this regard, it's, a key, it's key to address in, the in a comprehensive and balanced manner the challenges of the regions, because the best way to address the root causes of many challenges that affect us, like migration, inequality of opportunities, extremism, and even terrorism, and the best way to benefit from the assets, opportunities, and the immense untapped potential of the region is indeed by focusing the promotion of human development and by reinforcing regional integration through the support of sustainable development in this uh, Euro-Mediterranean region. The UFM has structured up to now regional dialogue platforms with multiple stakeholders involving not only government institutions, but also civil society, which are the real players, uh, like uh, financial uh, civil society representatives, financial institutions, youth organizations, regional, international, and international institutions, local authorities, parliamentaries, and even academia. This close interaction with the stakeholders through the dialogue platforms in all different areas of development that we cover in the UFM, integration of energy markets, climate action, water, water sustainable urban development, to mention but a few, is a fundamental tool to better understand the needs, to better identify the best practices, and to better promote the best concrete projects of cooperation that will benefit of our population and promote regional development. The identification of concrete regional cooperation projects and initiatives enhances partnerships and interactions within the region through the scaling up effect, exchange of best practices, exchange of information, and development of innovative initiatives with the aim of effectively improving the living conditions and the perspectives of, better, uh, of a better future uh, opportunity for our citizens. And once again, I underline use. Two UFM label projects will be presented during this forum. The rehabilitation of Lake Bizert in Tunisia and the multi-site urban regeneration in Jericho, Palestine as examples of climate action driven projects and result of our activity in the region. We have in this list more than 40 that can be uh, also referred, but uh, we select those two together with our colleagues of UFN Triple C uh, uh, Secretariat. Excellencies and dear colleagues, the mandate of the Standing Committee on Finance is to assist the Conference of Parties in exercising its functions with respect to the financial mechanisms of the, of the Convention. In this regard, the UFM is conducting a climate finance study focused on the Mediterranean region. This study, fund, funded by the European Commission, aim to provide a clear view of the funding flows relating to climate finance in the Mediterranean area, and it will made public, be made public during COP23. It is too soon to present detailed conclusions of the study, but I take this opportunity to share with you a couple of major findings for the Mediterranean region. I call the numbers that we referred firstly, and the dimension of the available so largely speak funding, and now look to the numbers. First, until 2016, only 2.9 billion US dollars were invested in 74 climate change related projects, mainly related to infrastructure, transport and energy, and addressing mitigation targets. Once again, adaptation is uh, a little bit forgotten in, our, uh, in the projects already uh, supported. From those 74 projects along the southern and eastern Mediterranean, the top five is leaded by Morocco and includes as well Egypt, Turkey, Jordan, and Tunisia. The UFM, as observer of the UNF, UNFCCC, will participate at COP23 in Bonn in November to present the results of the just mentioned study in a, uh, with a side event in which certainly we have some other partners with us to uh, allow a discussion of this 
of this uh, report recommendations and conclusions, but also to, in, to uh, show the engagement of the UFM in highlighting the role of youth in climate action in the Mediterranean. Youth constitutes one of the greatest assets of stability, for stability and development in the Euro Mediterranean region, and youth is deeply concerned about the effects of climate change and needs to be strongly involved and engaged to take the action and to contribute to policy making. It's fair to say that uh, through the initiatives taken by the Moroccan uh, presidency of COP22, we managed to uh, uh, support and to, pro to, to bring up uh, a youth network climate uh, group, which is very active now, and that's, one, that's also one of the successes that for us in the Secretariat of the Union of the Mediterranean, we would like to highlight in this uh, event. We hope to see you all of in that, that occasion. So thank you very much for your attention. I wish us, because I will be also part, part, uh, partnering the, 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 the works, a very fruitful foreign during the next couple of days. And sincerely, I hope that in the coming years we can bring access to finance as a real uh, reality. I forgive the, 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 repeta the, the repetition of words, but it's needed for us in this region to have clear sex to finance and to introduce, as it was being referred previously, that externalities dimension of job creation, of environmental uh, benefits, of social stabilization, and to value all those externalities in the selection and in the evaluation of projects. I know for my previous experiences, it's not too easy to create metrics and to, uh, to valorize sometime quantitative uh, uh, effects, but it's not a, it will not be the first time to do it, and certainly that will be the way to enlarge the access and the, finance, the financing of projects. Thank you so much. Truly, we had some very important scene-setting statements. I would like to thank His Excellencies. I would like to thank Her Excellency and to say that we have been truly inspired. It's a comprehensive opening statement.